The 15th of August is a momentous day. Not only does it mark India's independence, but also another consequential event, the Taliban's return to Afghanistan. It was on this day in 2021, that's last year, when the Taliban took over Kabul. Today is the first anniversary of that grim occasion, one that fundamentally transformed Afghanistan. From a democratic country, it became an Islamic emirate. One year on, how is Afghanistan faring? Here's a report. August 15th, 2021. After a nationwide lightning offensive and a hasty escape by American troops, the Taliban made a grand return to Kabul. Bearded Taliban fighters, some hoisting rifles, staged a victory on the streets of the capital, marking a stunningly swift end to the 20-year war. A year since that dramatic day, much has changed in Afghanistan. All right. The Taliban are struggling to govern. They're internationally isolated and economically weak. Their policies have driven millions into poverty. Their decrees have limited the liberties of women. But not everybody has a problem with it, especially not Islamists like these. Armed with rifles and hardline slogans, they celebrated independence in Kabul. Freedom, which they say was bestowed upon them by their God. With God's help, everything is possible. We were not worthy of it, but we have reached here with God's help. We will never forget in our life the happiness of that day when God gave us such a victory. So we are very happy, thanks to God. For ordinary Afghans, there's nothing divine about Taliban's rule, especially for Afghan women. They're now covered head to toe every time they're in public. And they're dispersed with force if they try to protest. Watch how. These images are just a glimpse into the plight of Afghan women. The full scale of their predicament is much worse. They have been removed from top levels of administration. They have been banned from getting secondary education. They can no longer appear in television dramas. They cannot travel without a male family member. They don't get caps if they aren't wearing hijabs. And in some areas, they cannot even get a driver's license. The big difference we see in our life is that all the girls' school are banned. We have not studied for the past one year, and this is hard to be compensated. My job was so valuable for me. I loved my job. We were so happy. But when the Taliban came, they did not allow us to go to work, saying, go back to your houses. We don't want women to work. As gender inequality worsens, so is the humanitarian situation. The numbers tell you the story. Some 3.4 million Afghans remain displaced. Over 20 million are at risk of food insecurity. 95% of them are skipping at least one meal every day. And one million children below five face prolonged malnutrition. These images are from the Indira Gandhi Children's Hospital in Kabul. As of August 15th, this hospital had no vacancies. All the beds and wards were full, with babies squeezed into cots two or three at a time. It's a fact that misery and poverty is increasing in our country day by day. The higher the poverty rates, the more malnutrition cases there are. I urge the international community and others assisting organizations to help the poor people, especially those suffering from malnutrition. As the health infrastructure crumbles, Afghanistan's social security is in tatters too. Explosions and suicide attacks have not stopped. If anything, they've grown in number. <laughs> In 2022 alone, there have been 16 terror attacks. The last one unfolded on August 7th. A bomb blast targeting the Shia minority. Eight people died, 
22 were injured. The victims say their country is as unsafe as it was. On the one hand, the economic situation is difficult. On the other hand, security situation is getting worse day by day. We will witness the same explosions and suicide attacks we used to witness in the past. And on the international level, the Taliban are far from any recognition. They've had 350 interactions with over 30 countries, yet the regime is still not formally recognized by the international community. It would be wise if the Talibs look into the mirror to find out why exactly. Bureau Report, We On, World is One. We On is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.